Hey guys, welcome back to Moe's Game Table. Today we're going to take a look inside Rifles in the Pacific, a game designed by Guitardo Zancani and published by Tiny Battle Publishing. This is the second solitaire game in the series. The first was Rifles in the Ardennes, and now we have Rifles in the Pacific dealing with the U.S. Marine Corps, the Commonwealth Forces against the Japanese military in the Pacific Theater. So this is a Ziploc game. There is no back of the box to look at, so we'll just jump right into the components and see what you get. We have a rule book mission booklet, two and a half sheets of counters, some player aids. This is a unit roster and army sheet overview. We've got our Japanese military forces, Commonwealth and Marine Corps forces, and we have the map sheets. There's one, the second one, and the third one on the back of the B map. So let's take a closer look at all the components. All right, so I've got two of the maps out here. The C is on the back of B. We're not going to look at that. We'll just look at these two. A is a full jungle terrain. B is a mix of beach and jungle terrain. In essence, what's going to happen is the enemy is going to start on one. You're going to start on six. You're going to be moving a line at a time all the way up. They're going to be moving at you as well. There's going to be some objectives. There's going to be events. There's also going to be blocking terrain and other features on the map that will affect your line of sight from line to line. And uh, just as a quick understanding of how it works is if there's blocking terrain here, say on five and we're in six, you can't see through to four and vice versa, four can't see through to six. So both uh, sides will obviously be affected by those pieces of terrain. We'll look at the counter sheets next. These are the Commonwealth forces. You have SMG rifles, uh, LMGs, anti-tank guns, and flamethrowers, and a couple of admin counters down here at the bottom. Next, you have a mix of Marine and Japanese forces. Same composition, you have SMGs, LMGs, rifles, bazookas, and flamethrowers. And for the Japanese, you have pistol, rifle, LMG, and flamethrower, as well as anti-tank type 97. You have some buildings, some jungle, which is going to be those pieces of terrain we talked about. The last counter sheet has admin counters and some more terrain features. And we'll take a look at the Unit roster sheet next. This is the friendly and enemy roster sheets where you're going to list out your units. If your game turn breakdown here, unit activation procedure, combat modifiers, close combat procedures, recon points, recovery, night range table, and then your turn track. And on the back, this is going to explain to you the army sheet overviews, which we're going to look at next. You see the gives the unit names down the left-hand side, vehicles, and then you have a patrol table, a tank table, anti-tank team table on the bottom. This is the build points, how much it's going to cost, your full squad table, unit special attributes, and the cost in BP of each unit, and obviously the nationality name. Here's the Imperial Japanese Army Sheet. This is the unit names, which we uh, talked about on the Army Sheet Overview. Equipment, patrol table, tank table, anti-tank team, full squad table, and the build cost here is 10. This is going to tell you the type of unit is, the range, then you have combat factors here for base combat factor and then your target number. And that's basically what you're trying to hit is that target number you want to get equal to or greater than to successfully hit the enemy that you're targeting. On the back, we have the SNLF and same thing as we saw for the army on the front. Next, we have the United States Marines. Same as we saw with the Japanese, the exact same type layout. Cost build point is 10. And then for the Commonwealth on the back and take a look inside the rule book. This is a 16-page rulebook, and you have a two-page table of contents. Makes it easier to be able to look up any rules that you need. You can just go right to that page number. It says here, Rifles in the Pacific is the second title in the Theaters of War series. These rules represent our effort to create a simple solitaire system, which recreates small combat engagements of 5 to 10 units per side. The rules have been designed to cover many periods. The World Wars, Classical Battles, Science Fiction, Fantasy, and more. Rifles in the Pacific covers the Pacific Theater of World War II, focusing on the years 1943 to 1945. You have your game overview, components included, and then there is some things that you as a player will need because this is a Ziploc game. You'll need to provide 5D6 and an opaque container because this is a blind chit draw game, so you'll need to put your units in there when you're drawing them out. Uh, game conventions and abbreviations, units, morale and morale check, map cards, terrain, and these are the two types of terrain like we were looking at on the counter sheets. You have your jungle, and then you have things like buildings. This is your base terrain, and then you have terrain features. And the terrain features are noted on the counters with a red dot. So that's how you can tell them apart, because they are both the same type of yellowish color. 
Then you have a terrain list, uh, multiple types of terrain, open, jungle, deep jungle, river, sea, shallow water, beach, tree, foxhole, village, building, fields, and hill. There's also barbed wire, then line of sight explanation, which we've talked about before. You have those six lines, and if you're on, say, line six, and there's a blocking LOS uh, object on line five, you will not be able to see to line four, and vice versa, the enemy cannot see you. The line of sight is blocked for both. Game sequence, your mission setup, set up your terrain, place your event markers, and then your squad selection. Mission execution, game turn, group creation, friendly unit activation, available friendly unit actions, enemy presence check, and enemy entrance. Event markers, enemy force activation, enemy attack, enemy units in special terrain, and the hopeless enemy attacks. Advance your game turn, recon points, then you get to your combat procedure, which we talked about briefly before on the army sheet, you're gonna have that TN number, which is your target number. You wanna be able to roll your D6, plus any applicable modifiers to match or beat that number to inflict damage on the enemy and take them out. Then you have your area effect, suppression, cover fire, close combat, engagement and close combat, and joining a close combat, enemy units entering close combat recovery, special weapons such as grenades, AT mines, vehicle combat, and then you have uh, all the effects with vehicles, armored vehicle damage, vehicles in cover, hidden units gating the hidden status, and then you have effects of being hidden, losing the hidden status, your spotting, leadership, leadership effects, fire group, night rules, uh, landing operations, sea terrain marker, then your mission end campaign game, starting a new campaign, your squad selection, and your end mission briefing. And then you have your experience points, and then your end of campaign and your credits here in the skills table is on the last sheet of the rulebook. And then you have the unit roster, which we have also on the player aid card on the back of the rulebook and uh, both sides of the back of the rulebook. So you can make extra copies if you need to. And we'll take a look inside the mission rulebook. This is uh, an eight scenario book and all of the scenarios are gonna be laid out pretty much the same. You're gonna have your event table, terrain table, enemy activation table, enemy presence, target, and uh, sniper tables, as well as an explanation of the objectives and what you're trying to do in the mission. Interesting thing here is the terrain is gonna be varied each time because you're gonna to have to roll for each of the stripes, one through six, and based on the roll is whether it's open or if it has different types of base terrain or terrain features inside of them, like buildings and uh, jungle, things like that, which will give you a new look each time. And obviously you can house roll anything you want, change things up or remove, add, whatever you wanna do. If, if you're finding the missions a little too easy or a little too difficult to beat, you can do that yourself. And then uh, this one has attacking forces table because this is a mission on the riverbank. You've been ordered to defend the riverbank. Enemy forces are moving in this direction and you must stop them. That's why you have your attacking forces table. Then you have a capture to bridge. You have defensive forces table because obviously you're going to be attacking them. Then you have uh, wave zero. You're taking part of an amphibious attack. The objective is to an enemy controlled beach. So you have a sea movement and special activation table. These are two new tables for this mission alone. Then we're back to demolition squad and an attack mission because you have defensive forces table here. And six is going to be a radio command table. That's another new table because you need to find and destroy an enemy radio station. Casualty evacuation here for the Kazavak mission. You will have uh, all of the same tables we've seen in the other missions. And then the final one, line of fire, you will have a company support table, which will add a flamethrower or 80 millimeter mortar, things like that to your squad. In this one, your company must attack a strong position defended by enemy forces. Pretty generic, pretty simple setups and scenarios. So I can easily see many more of these being created by owners of the game themselves, maybe they can come out with a couple of scenario packs or maybe downloads through Tiny Battles website. And that is a look at everything you get inside of Rifles in the Pacific, a game designed by Guitardo Zancani and published by Tiny Battle Publishing. And as we talked about before, the Theaters of War series looks like it's going to be a long running series. The first one, Rifles in the Ardennes, has been out a while. Rifles in the Pacific is now out and Marine Corps, that's a no brainer. I got to get hold of it. So I've got it now. Going to get it on the table and give it a shot, see how it plays. Guitardo's games are always very engaging and simple, easy to understand, but enough depth and complexity in a very simple system that does keep you coming back for more. This looks like a very simple system. I mean, look at it. It's just a simple six lines on a map sheet that you're going to be moving back and forth. And this is definitely a game of theater of the mind, it seems like. And that's the same way it was with Space Infantry, another longtime popular game that Guitardo did. 
that's been out of print for a while and everyone has enjoyed that's played it. So I expect this to be kind of along the same lines as that. And you get eight scenarios in the mission book. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see gamers coming up with more of their own. Maybe Guitar will release some. Uh, Tiny Battle may also release some or come out with expansions for the game. So looks like it's something that uh, will have some legs on it and small footprint. You can take it with you on the road if you're going to be on vacation or traveling for work and uh, not going to eat up a lot of table space. Easy to come back to your hotel room at the end of the day after a long day of meetings and slap this down on the table while you're eating some room service and crank out a few games before bed. Well, I hope that helps you guys out if you've been curious about this game. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time.